Hey folks, today I am laying it all out. My ride through law school in Canada. No fluff, no filter, just the real deal. Let's talk law school in Canada unfiltered. Hi, my name is Chelsea Ram. If you are new here, I am a law school graduate. I have three online businesses and multiple online courses for people trying to start online businesses of their own. If you like this video and my content, please subscribe on this channel. We talk all things productivity and well-being. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. I am going to be splitting this video up into two parts. First half of the video, I am going to be talking about why I thought law school in Canada was easy and then the second half of the video we'll be talking about all the challenges that I had in law school. So starting part one, I thought law school was easy. I'm just gonna put it out there. I truly thought it was easy. I mean when I say that I will put a little asterisk and say that law school was definitely the highest level of schooling that I have ever done and therefore the most challenging in terms of the amount of work and accountability that I need to have to myself, it was definitely the most challenging out of any other schooling, but it was honestly not as challenging as I thought it would be or as challenging as for me, at least as how people made it out to seem. I know this is not everyone's experience and I do not want to be attacked for saying that it's easy when a lot of people don't find it easy. But for me, I started law school when it was COVID and my entire first year and a half of law school out of three years was completely online. I found that really easy for me because it allowed me to do other things. I'm really good at keeping myself accountable to do things uh, school-wise. And I found that I didn't need to do things unnecessarily. For example, I recognized that I could save a lot of time if professors were recording their calls and their classes on Zoom and watch them later when it was more convenient for me and watch them on double speed. So I would just miss the lecture and save a lot of time by watching them afterwards on double speed and doing little things like that made the whole experience go a lot faster, smoother and easier for me and allowed me a lot more free time than the typical. Now, I do want to say this is an exclusive experience. I know it's no longer COVID and that most schools are in person. So that was just my experience for the first year and a half. One thing I would say, by the way, I went to, the, to school at the University of Ottawa in Canada. Cold calling is definitely something that people speak a lot about in law school. I don't know if it was just particularly my school or all schools in Canada, but there was not a lot of cold calling during my experience. There are some professors that did cold call or that I heard about cold calling in other classes, but they were typically like older, older professors who use that Socratic method of teaching. Not a lot of professors in my experience did that so I found it really not challenging in that sense. Again, this is my particular experience at the University of Ottawa and also from other people I've spoken to in other Canadian law schools, but we'll put a pin in that. I do think that in general, the Socratic method is used a lot less in Canadian law schools. Another thing I found particularly easy about my university was that there were a lot of extracurriculars, which were really was really nice. There's a lot of clubs and activities, as well as there's a lot of extra curricular interest subjects that you could choose from and I found that some classes were honestly really easy like I knew that if I chose a class such as the happiness in law or mindfulness in the legal field that was a class that was considered easy just so happens to actually be my interest so I did take those classes but if I wanted I could choose classes that I could definitely get good grades in and I could also see you can see what your grade is going to come from before you even choose to enroll in a course you can see okay this one is worth um, 100% of my final exam this one is going to be based off of 100% of a written paper so I found it easy in the sense that you could choose your classes based on what your interests were, who your professors were, and you could choose like the easier ones or the ones that you aligned with their teaching style. And also you could choose based on if there was a paper or an exam or not. Now, I don't think this is exclusive to law school. I'm pretty sure this is something that you did in your undergrad too. I just wanted to point that out and say that it did make my experience a lot easier. I also found it easier to connect with people in fields that I was interested in while in law school. So for example, 
example, uh, positive psychology and well-being and that kind of stuff are things that interest me and always have. So when I took happiness in the law, I became well connected with that professor and that professor led me to take another course and also introduced me to a bunch of people within the well-being section of the law in Canada, which honestly was really great, opened my horizons. I did a little bit of an internship for someone that she connected me with. I found connections to be easier, not that the connections were easier to be made in law school, but the right connections because you're in a space where people, I mean, ideally you want to be a lawyer or work within the legal field. So you're in a space where you're more likely to be surrounded by people in that field and you can talk to them and obviously they can help you. I also found law school easy in a sense in Canada because it was around the time I mean, this wasn't just in Canada, but it, I graduated around the time that AI came out. ChatGPT really was like more advanced. I, I know AI existed before then, but it was really more advanced. So this helped me a lot in terms of research and just finding different papers and case studies that I needed to write on and I needed to learn. It just helped me a lot. And I will have to say that was probably because of my background in my business and creating online businesses that it allowed me to know how to use AI better and faster and apply it into my legal space. But um, that is something that a lot of people, I think in general in law school and in all levels of education could really use and not use as a way to plagiarize, but use as a way to assist them uh, that I don't think people are doing as much as they should. I have a video on that. Definitely check that out if you are not using AI and you are in school. Now let's move on to part two of this video, which is about what I found challenging while I was in law school. First things first, let's just say it it cost me a lot of money. It was a three-year program and every semester, so twice a year, I would pay around 10,000 Canadian dollars, a little more or a little less depending on the semester, but it averaged to around 10K a semester. If you're in the United States, this is way more. So I will say I saved a lot of money by not going to the States. Also, if you're an international student, that's something to consider. You're gonna be paying a lot more fees in Canada. I also found it challenging because I was no longer the smartest one there. If you're going to law school, especially in Canada, there are so few law schools that every single law school in Canada is good quality. You are going to be around people who were smart when they were in high school and or university. You are no longer the smartest. I mean, you might be, but <laughs> it's obviously very rare to be that in law school. And if you're used to that, that's kind of like a little shocker, but <laughs> it wasn't too crazy for me, but I remember I like applied to be a tutor in my first year going on to my second year of law school. And I was like, yeah, I'll definitely get this. Like I have teaching experience. Like I have so many extracurriculars. My GPA isn't horrible, whatever. And I didn't get it. Even though in my online businesses for years, I had been coaching and teaching and I felt like I had all this experience and I did, but they didn't see it as relevant and other people were getting better grades than me now because I'll be fully transparent. I was a straight B student in law school, but I didn't care. I was not giving it my full effort. So I kind of did the bare minimum to just get Bs and B pluses most of the time. Anyways, I did not get that internship and I was like, wow, I've never been rejected like that. I know that sounds maybe bad, but like, yeah, that was something that I was like, okay, not top anymore. And that leads to my next point that I found, I guess, a little challenging, not challenging, but like shocking, which is that I didn't get away with things anymore. I found that I'm like, I find myself to be a really good talker. And so in situations in high school and even university, I would be able to talk my way out of like getting exams deferred or um, just little things like, oh, I, I miss school because of this reason. I'm not gonna give, you know, specific examples, but like sometimes I would make excuses and it would work. People wouldn't question it. But in law school, like everyone is a lawyer. So they're like, yeah, give me evidence to support that. Like, I'm not just gonna let you off the hook. And it's not like I was doing anything crazy, like being like not showing up for school or not handing in my assignments. I, I was, but like, if I asked for something way ahead of time, they, well, that was required. It would have to be way ahead of time, which is totally fine. But like, I wouldn't be able to get away with little things that I used to be able to get away with. I just, people didn't want to hear me talk, but it was fine. It was fine. It was just, you know, a shocker. Um, Next thing I found challenging was when I 
went to law school in person after a year and a half of online law school is that people's expectations of themselves were kind of put on to me and how they studied were put on to me. Another thing I found challenging was the reading. So when I first started law school, I remember like the first reading I ever had to do was only 15 pages, but it took me like literally two hours to get through the first page. I had no idea how to do the readings. And that was just for one out of seven of my classes for readings assigned just for that evening and more was going to be assigned the next day. And I was like flabbergasted at the amount of reading and, and like hard reading there was to do. But then what I realized very quickly is that for my learning style and for what I was being graded on, I did not need to do the readings. I could just totally attend the classes and be fully alert. And I did not need to do the readings at all. And that worked for me. I got B pluses. I was happy with that. I didn't want to spend more time reading just to potentially get an A when I knew that you know like that's just i was doing other things on the side i was building businesses so i didn't want to do that but then when i got in person to law school people were telling me about how much they were uh spending reading and how long it was taking them to do projects and how many hours they spent doing papers and stuff like that and then you kind of question at least i did if you're doing enough because everyone else is doing like five times more than I am and I'm like focusing on other things like I've had, had a full night's sleep and these people are like in the library until like 4 a.m. when the exam's at 6. So yeah, just like the people you're surrounded by for me made a difference as well as like I said I was getting B's, B pluses, like sometimes the occasional A would slip in there, but like my average was B plus. I couldn't get into big law. I didn't try. I didn't want to. I have no desire to. I am I'm not even practicing as a lawyer and have no desire to, at least for right now. But you have to get really good grades for that. So I mean, if I wanted to do that, I would find it challenging. And that's it. I mean, the last thing I wrote down in my notes about what I found challenging was the readings, but as previously stated in this video, I just didn't do them, so it wasn't really a challenge. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more content just like this. If you like this video, make sure to check out that video I mentioned before, which is all about AI and how to use it while you're in school. This applies to you even if you're not in law school in any form of education. So check that out. Leave me a comment down below and like this video if you enjoyed it. I will see you in my next video.